For more than a century, football has been a cultural mainstay in the cities of Glasgow and Liverpool. Firmly entrenched in the local psyches, it's how allegiances are identified and families can be divided. These are cities where passions run high and fans demand heroes. It could do anything. It could do anything, Ken. If you pick the world 11, you know, Kenny Dalglish should definitely be in it. He's just a genius. The king, Kenny Dalglish, the best player to ever wear in the red shirt. Kenneth Matheson Dalglish is one of those heroes, a footballer known to many simply as the king. In July 2009, Liverpool Football Club welcomed back a legend. Overseeing the club's academy and taking on an ambassadorial role at the request of manager Rafael Benitez, Kenny Dalglish was back at the club he served for 14 years. I'm delighted to come back. Um, Rafa was wanting to make changes. He wanted me to come back and help with the academy, with the redevelopment of the academy, and also uh, thought it would be of help to the club in some other aspects as well. His return has ensured that the name Dalglish will forever be linked with Liverpool. The fact remains though, it already was, and always would be. Born in Glasgow in 1951, Kenny Dalglish was raised in the Docklands of Govan, where like thousands of other kids nationwide, football quickly became a priority. Something I always wanted to do, I enjoyed, uh, enjoyed going to the matches, enjoyed playing football, enjoyed kicking the ball in the back garden. Uh, my dad, something I wouldn't say interfered with my studies, but uh, I wouldn't have thought, I wouldn't have thought the marks would have got me too good a job. So this is where I had a wee bit of uh, ambition to be a professional footballer. And I was fortunate that I got uh, the right people at the right time came to watch me. One of those people was Sean Fallon, assistant manager to the great Jock Steen, when Glasgow Celtic became Britain's first European champions in 1967. Tremendous ability. Skill, great touch on the ball, and the reading the situations was 100%. He was a boy, actually, once you looked at him, you'd sign him straight away. Dalglish was a regular visitor to Ibrox, home of Celtic's fierce rivals, Rangers. But as his reputation grew, the young Scot waited for a phone call that never came. Plenty of rumours going about, and the Rangers scouts saying I was signing for Rangers, and everybody thought I was signing for Rangers apart from myself and my dad because we were never asked, uh, but when Celtic came in, then my dad, who was a Rangers fan as well, said, well, if you're going to get an education in football, that's the best place to go. Celtic's captain was Billy McNeil, already a legend at the club, having lifted the European Cup that year. I remember one pre-season, um, suddenly this young fellow uh, came in with the rest of a group of youngsters, um, all talented, lots of real talented players, but this one stood out. Um, and every one of us notices him. Celtic had unearthed another diamond, albeit one still flawed. The raw talent needed a tougher edge, but for the time being at least, would not find it at Celtic Park. He had been down in England at two or three clubs. He actually spent a month at Liverpool and came back home. We fixed him up then and placed him out to Cumbernauld Juniors, where he was playing among men there. It was an experience, uh, and it certainly toughened you up. Uh, there was no prisoners. At the end of that season, Big Jock took the Celtic first team to come and all, and they all respected and appreciated what Jock had done in giving them Kenny. The appreciation was mutual. 37 goals brought Dalglish back to Celtic, where his education continued apace. He was not alone. Quality street gang, they were fabulous. I mean, what, what a fantastic group of, of players they were. I mean, I, I'm saying that it was obvious that you could see Kenny was going to be a real star. But that was obvious about Danny McGrain, David Hay, George Connolly, Lou McCarry, Paul Wilson. They were super players, they really were. It's as talented a group of youngsters as I've ever seen. They won every competition they played in, which was unique. It was only a matter of time be before they were going to... They're pushing the first team players. Well, it always seems as if you won everything when you look back, doesn't it? It wasn't quite like that. We did win a few things. 
but, but we also lost as well and I don't think there's any harm in losing it uh, teaches you uh, to be a bit more hungry and appreciative to win something else Learning his trade alongside Dalgleish was Danny McGrain McGrain just took in so much I may have taken one or two things from, from our surroundings but Ken seemed to have taken in five or six or eight or nine but his brain the least of science will be, will be an amazing thing to look at <laughs> I think the first time I ever played for for the first team was uh, the second leg of a League Cup tie they played I think it was Hamilton Ackies at Celtic Park and beat them 10-0 in the first leg or something and we went back to play them in the second leg and they were 4-0 up in the second half and they put me on he wasn't taking a chance was he 14-0 up in the aggregate and they said we can risk it Dalgleish broke into the first team as Celtic were midway through an historic run of nine league titles in a row and already his attitude showed wisdom beyond his years. He knew what was needed to be a top professional. When you get a start in professional football then you've got to take it. The start is, the start is, is basically what it says, only the start. It's not the end, once you're there then the hard work starts but some people fail because when they get there they think that's it. It was a golden age for the club, and Dalgleish was soon at the heart of it. The thing is, there's the attribute of creating space, leaving space for you to put the ball into the space, and it made it so easy. What he had was so important, was speed of thought, and that will overcome speed of movement. He had a great knack of scoring goals, and just creating goals, and we took it for granted then, because it was just the thing that Kenny did. He had the, the, the wee bit of genius that separated him from even the, the very best player. In 1977, Dalgleish led Celtic to the League and Cup double, but had become restless and sought pastures new. It wasn't an easy decision to make. Uh, and I suppose some people would say it was selfish. Well, life isn't a rehearsal. You've got to do what you've got to do. and if. You're ambitious, you've got to go and try somewhere else. Big Jock tried like nobody's business to, to keep him, but uh, you know, Kenny, great determination, and when he thought that he was doing something that was good for him and good for his career, then he just went about and did it. But he just got too good for us. He just got too good for Celtic. In a similar twist of fate, Liverpool's current hero was about to spread his own wings. Kevin Keegan's would be tough boots to fill. Liverpool fans knew it. Don't need to worry. Absolutely. No, no. He would be twice the player that Keegan would be. Um, no, he was something special. 